Yes, I am. Trucks, 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 and more trucks. Wait a minute. Oh, I got to put my phone on silent. Oh Guys, welcome to another Talking Truck Show while well, Kent silences his phone. Otherwise known as Tech Support with Andre Smirnoff. <laughs> yes. Tech Support? Uh, truck Support. We have, we, we talk trucks because we love trucks, obviously. And uh, Mr. Truck and I just got back, what, a couple days ago? Yes. From a 2020 Chevy Silverado light duty 1500 diesel and heavy duty diesel yeah. drive event. Now why is it just Andre truck support, technical support? What's I don't know, I don't know what Zach meant by that. I don't understand that. He's, he's you there. had to get Kent set up on TFL now so he could tune into the live chat. But it's an apple. I mean, uh, I don't know anything about fruit. I really don't. I don't wow. Know about it. So guys, in this video, we're gonna talk. So Kent and I, Mr. Truck and I, we noticed a lot of just very unique features on yes. the new trucks, on yes. the new Chevys. It was very interesting. So, so uh, we're going to discuss both of them, the light duty diesel, the three liter, and the big, the big guy, the 6.6 .6 guy. And we saw Bigfoot. Bigfoot, what? He kind of walks, We've, he lumbers when he walks, remember? He's that's there by that's the on Mr. Truck's channel, so if you go oh. to Mr. Truck TV Oh, oh you didn't channel, get a picture of the... Uh, no, I don't have a Bigfoot uh, picture. Uh, okay. So this is about the latest truck everything we can tell you, some unique features, um, and also we're going to be answering questions. We have a lot of kind of light duty, half ton questions, and also questions about heavy duty versus light duty. So you got to say howdy, hello. To howdy. Guys. Howdy. Howdy, hello. Um, so we have a lot of you guys joining still. Lion, Boney Chuck, Isaac, uh, Ron. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Russian Cowboy joining. is on here. Russian Cowboy. Well, no, you're the cowboy. I'm the Russian. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's kick it off, dude, because um, we've been waiting for a half-ton diesel truck from Chevrolet for a long time. Oh, this makes a complete set. Now all the big three have all three half-ton diesels. Well, Rams, or coming, or Rams very is coming, soon. but it's right. been around. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a three-liter straight six. The power rating is pretty interesting, actually. Two hundred seventy-seven horsepower. 460 pound feet of torque. It's a straight six little engine, Inline. but it's 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 beautiful because straight six is balanced naturally. Yes, it's a torquey it's little a, rascal. Mwah. Oh, so, and it's got so, a 10 speed. It's got a 10 speed. And the most remarkable thing about it is it's the same price as a 6.2 V8 gas engine. Who yeah. else does that? Does a diesel and the gas for the same price? I, I'm amazed. Um, so there's we still cannot talk about how it drives. Because uh, the, uh, Chevrolet wants to be uh, fair to all the journalists, and um, there's still multiple ways, multiple groups of journalists driving the truck right now. So on Sunday morning, we can actually talk about how it drives. So right. stay tuned to tfltruck.com and also Mr. Truck uh, Channel. Com. But we're uh, not wait. You know, we're not the only ones waiting. Chevy is waiting, waiting for the EPA to give them a certification yes. so they can actually tell us. I can tell you what I think it's going to get. But they have to be certified for we all know, and they publish all the cool stuff, and we know exactly. Oh, don't uh, touch chicken, my chi chicken, chicken says that Yaz has just donated one dollar. So thank you, Yaz. Uh, obviously, we have always love your super chat donations right here, right now. But tell me, so we can what we can say about the light duty diesel, the 1500, yes. the three liter. Yes. Is uh, Chevy had us do a small um, MPG loop. Right. Um, so, Mr. Truck, tell us about the loop that you were on, and how did that go? Well, I went with Bruce Smith, and he was—he was—it was a contest. They had us do this one loop, and, they, and everybody wanted to say, "Well, we get the best fuel mileage." We went a little toy truck, and I wanted to go, you know, like 60, 65, so I get like a real world feel yes. for what I got. That was my—I mean, I didn't win a win a, win a toy, but anyway, but Bruce <laughs> did. So he put around 40 miles an hour and so kind slow of slow speed. Yes, and then he kind of drifted, just coasted downhills, all that hyper. MPG stuff they do. So we got 44.7, then I missed the sign, so we came back and circled around, ended up with 44.3 miles to the gallon. But that's 40 miles but, an hour, that's not nothing like you're, anybody else is gonna get. But that's using the trip meter. So you zeroed it out, Right. you went on a little loop, yeah, yeah, and you were kind of hypermiling, right, that's slow the, speed. The, the computer computer figured it for us to how accurate that is, and yeah. they're getting very accurate. It used to be they're way off now, they're pretty close. but. So that's what we did, and so what did you? But you did something like I, well, I was with you when you did it. Yeah. I want that real world testing that's that's kind of related to what people do, and that's what yeah. we did, or you did. You were driving. Right. And um, Casey uh, Wedding is asking about the heavy duty truck. We'll get to the heavy duty truck in one minute or a few minutes, actually. Uh, so you and I, 
on the way from the uh, event back to the hotel, we did the small loop also together, yeah, yeah. and I set the cruise control at 60. Yeah, I had to keep uh, telling you to speed up. You were just, you were wanting to go real no, slow. It, I wanted you to go was, fast. It was like fast. side roads with like 60 mile an hour and 55 mile an hour speed limit. So I couldn't race. I couldn't go racing. <laughs> but we, is that your chicken? Yeah, somebody's a chicken, that's um, for sure. But, anyway, uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> but we got about almost 32. And yeah. I have it in the video. I have it in the video. That's, that's what, ooh, I'm, ooh, ooh. That's what I'm betting. I am betting that that's where someone come out on the highway, about 32 from my experience. I mean, that's nothing official. That's just my my yakking up a storm because I really so, think that's where it's going to land. So Martin Wayman, uh, $2 donation uh, using Super Chat. So thank you very much. Have you all gotten used to the front end? I think you're referring oh, to the, the half ton. Yeah, the, the um, uh, actually this one is an RST. So it has a lot yeah. of body color grill, right. grill components. I actually like this more than the Chrome. I don't know. You kind of like Chrome, chrome right? I like Chrome. Yeah, but that's and see, that's what last year's half ton looked like. So there's no, no big new news on the look of the 1500. Yeah. yeah. So actually the diesel doesn't look any different from a regular 1500 truck. On the hood, there's a little label that says Duramax. Yes, but you know how the hood is. What? You know, the hood used to be just for the diesel. Yeah. So now it's also the gas engine, but it's fake. Kind of reminds me of Toyota's stuff. They have all those fake hood scoops. So no, if that's no, a gas, talking about oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's the, heavy the, duty, the you're duty right, stuff. you're right. Light duty doesn't but, have a But scoop. the heavy duty, uh, yeah, we'll get to the heavy duty in one second. But the light duty guy, uh, the, the exhaust pipes look very similar to the gas engine. Only when you hear it, you could tell it's a diesel, um, as we showed in the video. So that, that's yeah. that. Yeah, now yeah. you were saying on here, that one that you had a question about camera functions. Was that the half That's time? for the heavy duty. Oh, yeah. that's for the heavy duty, yeah. okay. But there is one more thing. Oh, another donation, dude. Oh, B Birdman oh, okay. Duncan. Cool. Thank, well, thank thanks, you for another Birdman Duncan. Two bucks. Uh, there's one other thing that caught people's attention a, a lot at the event, and also you, you guys, is that um, the new straight six, the three liter engine, has a timing chain, which is good, right? Yeah. It's good to have a timing yeah, chain. Yeah, and it you know, goes clear up to the overhead cam, goes all, it's all, it's a big chain. You know, we it's, remember that Ford had a belt back on the back. And these right guys here. have a chain on the back. So yes. whether you like chains but or do you like belts? It's on the back. Well, <laughs> so what there's happens? A, there's not a whole lot of room on the front. You know, you only put so many alternators and air yes. conditioner compressors. Yeah. After a while, you run out of room. That's how that. So yeah, so on the front, there is still a belt drive as far as accessories are concerned. On the top of this engine, the three liter, there is also the water cooled air intake. Yes, system. like I used to call them intercooler. That's a very yeah. nice place to put it. Now the water runs through it and all that because yeah. you know normally they're down by the radiator. And this makes it such a, all this is really well designed. I mean, everything's connected shortly. There's no hardly any length from the intercooler to the intake, to the exhaust. To the turbo. To the turbo. Yeah. All that is so close. That is really efficient with design they have on that engine. But you can see alternators and all this other stuff. There's no place to put a chain on the front. But, you know, on a full-size truck, say heavy duty, they have gears for all that. They don't use They're gear driven yeah. timing. They're gear driving like semis are. All that stuff on the back. Yeah. Which that's what I was hoping for. But, of course, that costs more money. So they did a chain, and that's another so, thing too. They talked about that they rated this engine at 150,000 miles, mm -hmm. which I don't agree with. But that's Ford did the same thing on theirs. And I says, "Well, that gas engines do 200,000. Why are you telling me this on a diesel?" Well, Cummins is rated at 300,000. The Ford Power Stroke is rated at 250,000. So I don't know where they come up with these numbers, but 150,000 miles. We all know they're going to go longer than that. So yeah. I, I don't understand that. And I had a lot of comments on my video about that because I I don't agree with that. But I'm sure they have some reason on what's you know, the warranties are 100,000 miles. So the timing so. chain issue will be kind of several years down the line, potentially. Right, If right. it's an issue, because it should last, you know, like you said, it's rated for 150,000. Yeah. Unless you put it in one year and you're working, <laughs> and you're working, you know, your butt off. Well, that's how um, semis are. Semis, they'll yeah. give you 700,000, whatever it is, and, and for like two years, and that's it. So it, it's a, like yeah. we saw that Freightliner, but... Yeah, and that, but you know, the bottom belt here, if you can see it in that picture, that is some kind of a super belt that runs in oil. And I think it runs a pressure pump. I'm not sure. Do you remember if that was a pressure pump belt? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but, but like you said, it it's runs actually, in oil. they called it the <laughs> lifetime belt. Okay. So well, I guess it is rated for 150,000. That means 150,000. Yeah, so lifetime belt means kind of the, the, the life of the engine. But that doesn't so, mean you're probably going to have to separate the engine from the transmission if you ever to, do have to change to that. To service it, right? But then that's how Ford is too. I can't remember what uh, what Ram's 
uh, eco diesel has on the back end. That's been a long time since I've seen that. Well, those are V6s, so that's going to be right. really interesting. Right. Um, so we don't have the light duty diesel in Colorado yet. So it's going to take us at least a, a month or two to actually get them here and yeah. actually test them on our MPG loops test them on the Ike, so that's still coming, so that's yeah. going to be exciting. And I forgot to ask him about that, because one of the engineers at the launch of the 2019-1500 said that these half tons, these 1500s, were going to have a, tra a trailer mirror, kind of like the heavy duty. Yes. And, and I wasn't didn't see event. one, and I forgot to oh, ask right. those guys. Um, I'll, have to, uh, I'll so, have to email Monty. Well, that's a perfect segue, really quick segue to the heavy duty trucks, because the heavy duty trucks do, those, do have those big yeah, yeah. towing mirrors. And we drove a lot of them, actually. Yeah, and they power telescope, they power fold, they Boom. do all that power stuff, which is good. Yeah. They're just a little, just, I'm not quite used to them, but I do like the idea of a single arm, because that's what, you know, Ram has. Ford has a double arm. Most semis have gone to a single arm, and that takes some good engineering and some good heavy-duty materials, because you don't want it vibrating. Right. I that's remember really one of the earlier ones from another brand, it vibrated really bad the first year, they fixed it. So, yeah. So, it's, uh, whether you love it or like it, but... I like it looking that way. When it's extended out, it looks kind of goofy to me, but that's just me. So the heavy duty, we're not talking about MPG on this truck right now. Plus, we didn't have a good chance to do MPGs. We, we drove them for about an hour in the morning. Uh, we drove a small loop in the truck, but we went yeah. up the mountain. Yeah. So that MPG wasn't very clear. No. It wasn't clear what it was doing right. um, as far as like a, a good test. So, and we cannot talk about how it drives until Tuesday. Tuesday morning, early. Right. That was so, the, the news that we did get, too, is now they're saying it does have an aluminum tailgate. Because we were trying yes. to find out, is there any aluminum on this thing? Yeah. And what so, we heard a long time ago was no, but now they've changed their minds. Right. So really quick, a summary of the new heavy duty. It's an all-new truck. Right. So some people are saying, is. oh, is it just a, a new front end or no. whatever? No, no, no. no. It's the taller. It's wider. It's longer. It <laughs> is an all-new truck. The frame is different. The yeah. suspension has changed. It's now 5.2 inches longer wheelbase for the crew cab. Uh, the body is all new. It's different from the light duty truck. Only the only share the roof and the sunroof area. The mice in my uh, car. There's some mice, um, and uh, the new engine <laughs> is uh, two. Well, one new engine. All yes. new is a 6.6 liter gas V8. Yes. Uh, which we drove. Right. And, and it's we, made we it can't to a six speed about automatic. It. Six speed updated six speed. Yes. Yes. And, then, and there's, um, there's some things I like about it, some things I don't. But. Right. But we, you won't say it until Tuesday. Was well, that a driving impression if I talk about the six you, speed? You cannot talk about how it drives. Oh, I, no, chicken. Okay. Oh, chicken. Chicken. Uh, this is from uh, Don, Don Megahan. So thanks, Don. Cool, thanks, uh, Five Doug. bucks, and if you're not on the bo on the hood, I'll put you on the hood in one second. With the way Ford is doing hybrids in the tranny, you think it would ever make sense to do it a diesel hybrid? FYI, I'm already on the hood. Helium. <laughs> 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 Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. So uh, we can't talk about the Explorer. Because the Ford Explorer, like you're referring to, uh, oh. has the hybrid system. Right? Yes. Um, so right now they're using the 3.3 liter V6. Yes, no uh, turbo. Non-turbo. And the electric motor is sandwiched between the engine yes. and the transmission. And a 10-speed transmission. And I think, I mean, I, it's probably not breaking news, but I think that same configuration with a little bigger engine will be exactly what we're going to see in the 150. I really think that's So that's coming. Be. But yeah. one other interesting part that um, was at that Ford Explorer event is that they're calling that 10 speed with a mo electric motor, uh, which yes. is a very clever design, a yes. modular design, right. which means they can take that in theory, in theory, and sure. attach it to different engines. That's exactly um, what I'm saying. Yeah, right, right, right. We're right. going to see it. And it's really cool how it's an engine, and then it's the electric motor, and then it's the torque converter and transmission. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a very compact design. It's a design. very clever system. It's using yeah. in the Explorer a small battery, right. 1.5 kilowatt hour, yeah. but it could use a bigger battery if it needed to. Right, and it's right. out of the way. Like I've had explore, you know, cars with that, and you couldn't use it. You couldn't get a spare tire. There's no room for it with yeah. all the batteries on it. So, no, there's a lot of good things so that are coming out from that. I, we don't know enough, anything about what's going to happen with the Ford F-150 or mm -hmm. if they're going to use a diesel hybrid, but it's possible because that 10-speed ten, ten transmission then mates to the... Uh, the transfer case. Right. So the transfer case doesn't know what's powering it. Right. And the it is a transfer has, case. It's not right. all-wheel drive. It's right. a, actually, it's an interesting system. It has a little right. clutch in it, too, in the front part. Another thing we don't know is if that, that hybrid system with that PTO they're talking about 
can generate a big generator in the back of 150. We don't know that either. Yeah. Uh, 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 David N. is asking, uh, Andre and Mr. Chuck, what happened to the beef jerky? Well, oh, we, we man. Just, we just got full. Oh, no. I want some. Are we out of it? No, hey, no, no. Andre, we've got we, a we can. What is the comfort like in the HD seat? Can't Thank talk about that. Is that a oh, driving impression? I think so, that would be. Yeah. A yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. It's not really a driving impression, but it's an impression about uh, how it feels to, in, to be in the driver's seat. Well, I slid right out of them, so, I mean. You fell out? I know. No. They're easy no. to get in out um, I'll say that, but that's sorry, not driving to be, to be fair, we, we'll, we'll save that till Tuesday, okay? Oh, so. oh, are we done talking about half tons? Yes. Well, Go sure. heavy duty. I know. I got stuff to talk well, about. I, I said there was a segue I'm to heavy duty. I'm sorry. I'm we're, we're segueing I was, it. I was going to talk about that exhaust, exhaust, exhaust break thing that I've been complaining about, you know? Exhaust break thing. So, uh, Dan that's Atkinson, thank stuff. you, buddy. Five bucks. You're on the board. You're everywhere. Um, here's some real-world results for you guys. My leveled 2019 FX4 Ranger got 13.5 MPG towing, a 95 F-150 over 800 miles across the Appalachian Mountains. So, Dan, you delivered the trailer with, was it on the trailer? With an F-150 on it, 800 miles, 13.5 MPG. That's a really good result, actually. Yeah, 800 miles, Holy yeah. cow. What do you mean it's level? Did you put a leveling kit in the front? I, I don't remember you uh, telling yeah. me, Dan. So, yeah. so that's a really good result, actually. Um, so that's cool. Go back to the heavy duty. Oh, oh. So I can't talk about the half ton exhaust break. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you can. I can. Okay. Guys, Kent is just about to break some big knowledge about the three liter diesel. Yeah. Exhaust break. Now, and two. I hope GM is listening because I complained to the engineer long enough that he fell asleep finally the last couple. <laughs> but anyway. They got exhaust brake in this, just like they do in the Colorado and the Canyon. And that was like, the only, and then you get into the half-ton class, and nobody else does. I mean, Ford doesn't have it. Even the Titan XD on that V8 Cummins the does not Eco have an exhaust brake. And the old Eco Diesel from Ram didn't. I don't know what the new one's going to have. So none of those guys have it. This 1500 with that 3-liter inline 6 has an exhaust brake. And how does it do it? It uses a uh, variable geometry turbo to clo right. close it up a little bit. Right. So it's got that and grade shifting, just yeah. like they all do that 10-speed. But, you know, on the Colorado and the Canyon, there's a button, and it says both of them. So you hit the one button, and they both come on. That's how this one is. You On the little knob, you hook it to tow haul mode, tow -haul. and the exhaust brake comes on. Yes. But it's not labeled anywhere. Nobody knows. When you go through the cheap one, it just has a little tiny icon. You go to the expensive one, it has a big yeah. screen, it says tow haul mode, doesn't mention exhaust brake. It has one they need to tell the world about, especially when nobody else has one. And, and they're not when telling they're the us. only one in the class, why would you not shout it from the rooftops? But Go to the mountaintop and yes, say, I have yes. an exhaust brake. Yes, that's my theory. Tell the yes. world about it uh, and, you know. It, but, but it kind of relates to their philosophy. You know, they also don't tell us what gear you're in. <laughs> so <laughs> so GM, GM doesn't like to tell you a lot of things. Come on, yeah, um, they, they have no uh, turbo pressure gauge. No turbo uh, pressure uh, gauge. Uh, um, Give us some I info, told GM, GM this. please. I told Chevrolet this. Yes. Chevrolet, you need to have like a power user mode. So that maybe, was a good idea. Maybe charge another $99 or something and have a new gauge cluster for for guys who like to look at like their gears. Like all that info, yeah. Uh, their, you know, their turbo boost, yes. their b exhaust brakes. Right, that's a good idea, all hell of, of a good idea. And then yeah. people you know, that really care would buy that option. Or you know, I, yes. I think it's great, that's a good, that's a good so way to do it. So charge money maybe for it, give us a lot of information, and that's gonna be great. Uh, so what are your things on the heavy duty? Hey guys, oh, before we segue back to heavy duties, why don't we tell all the people that we have tuning into the show what they can get? So yeah, Black so chat. a lot of you guys have been donating money using Super Chat, which was yes. awesome. And for ten bucks, you can get a sticker. For twenty-five, a patch. For fifty, a hat. But for one ninety-nine, you could also get a hoodie. And this is a oh, limited yeah. run. Only a hundred made. Um, they um, are cool. Look you at have the sleeves. TFL car and truck logos on the front. You have cool sleeves. TFL truck and TFL. Car I have sleeves. one of these. And That's it cool. just helps us. The money helps us buy new video gear like the microphones we're wearing now, like the cameras we use always. Uh, so we always appreciate your help. And email us at ask at tfltruck.com. If you make a donation, we'll send one to you. We'll sign them. Cool. And then we so, can buy more coffee and, and my chicken can have one more surgery. And <laughs> your chicken, his <laughs> neck is Oh goodness, we got more money. Julian. 
Uh, GM re uh, Julian Rodriguez, 10 bucks. Thank you so much, Julian. Uh, GM references how they refer to their customers to meet their needs. So my question is, how do I become a customer they reference to? I have bought several new Silverados and I have several questions. Oh, yeah. So uh, Chevrolet did something a couple years ago called the right. Chevy Legends. Yes, and we signed up for it, but we still yes, wait for but it. They don't but I think <laughs> they want you to have 100,000 miles on the same vehicle as one at, of the at rules. At least. Yeah. At so, least 100 mile, yeah, 1, and, miles. Yeah, and there's, there's a big group uh, of those people. And they let you have the information first before we get it. Which is really cool. We yeah. saw them at the thing in in, in, in Detroit. And, and they also were there in Texas at the state. Yes, fair. they were at Texas State Fair. So yeah, they follow yeah. them around. So they well, were first all of all, you can contact GM directly using their website, using the customer uh, contact page. Uh, if you do have a truck with a lot of miles, you can sign up for the Chevy Legends program. And yeah. actually, they pay attention to those people. Well, they do. You get a hat and they fly you to these events like we just got sometimes, back from in Oregon. That, sometimes that they fly you to an event. So they put you on camera and ask you questions. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, newbie four three one says, if I donate a hundred dollars, can we never see another front end of the GM heavy duty truck? Uh, no, um, no. Sorry, it's, it's just something you're gonna have to live unique. with. It's unique. It's different. Start, people are gonna start buying these trucks soon. Well, so buy the high country. You'll love it. Just don't buy the base model. So that's a big point. Uh, a lot of comments we've received that oh, people don't. More money. Will the exhaust brake be on the HD? Yes, it was. Yes. And it is. Yes. And the HD has an exhaust brake. Yes, and grade shifting on that 10 speed Allison. And, and a separate oh. button. Oh, oh. This is another thing, a you know. Sep a separate button. Yes, right. For the heavy duty. Boom, boom. Yeah, they got the grade, sh the tow haul mode and another one. that. Oh, 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 holy cow, we're on fire now. Well, it says, that what's the three liter compare? And wait, it's got to be, well, I don't know if it's light or not, but it's, it's aluminum engine, heads and block. Yeah, it's, it's so all aluminum. It could um, be aluminum. And I asked the engineer this question yes. ab about the um, light duty diesel, uh, the three liter. Um, he told me it was 212 kilograms, I believe. Yes. Uh, kilograms, I'm sorry, it's about, what, 450 pounds, maybe? Oh, I don't um, do grams, I don't know. Uh, so uh, it is relatively light when you consider all the other engines, but what makes it heavy is actually the emissions control system. Yes. But on the light duty diesel, the emissions control system, the um, death fluid injection is actually um, next to the engine on yeah, the Yeah, they kind of planted it, because they got all the room with it in line six, you got room on each side yeah, of it. Yeah, you have a lot so of So they room. stack more stuff there and that's very efficient. I like that. Yeah. But you know what, it's cool now. I mean, Ford's going to get all mad at me. But anyway, well, you know, all these years, Ford said, okay, we build our own engine ever since they dropped International back in probably 2011, whenever that was. Sure. We make our own engine. We make our own transmission. And that's true. And that was kind of a cool thing to say. They don't sub them out. Well, now Chevy, they, you know, they really don't go they, do much of the Zuzu anymore. So it's basically their Duramax. And, and the light duty is their own. Yes. And on this transmission, it's called Allison Branded but GM manufactures it. I think they use some engineering yet, but they make the parts, they do everything. They don't, uh, let's see, yes they do. They make the valve body, they make the solenoids, they make all that stuff. And so, you know, them and Allison are more separated than they ever have been. Yeah. So now Chevy can say, hey, we make our own engines. We make our own transmissions. So, yeah. you know. So, um, there was a question here, uh, Mr. Chuck, what did you mean by 150,000 mile life? That's what Is the that engineers said, that that's how they rated it. Yes, that's how they rate the engine. And Ford said the same thing, 150,000 on their three liter. So I don't know why they do that, because so on the big engines, they rate them way up. But I don't know that I think I would comparably say, of course, they're not pulling trailers all the time, but I think these light-duty diesels will get you as many miles as those big ones. But that's yeah, just so my basically theory. what that means is 150,000 or whatever it may be. Right. It's uh, You need to do an overhaul on the engine, well, possibly at that. Is that, that true? Of, well, that, that, that's what you would think. Yes. But I think what they really mean is, you know, on Ford, it's the belts. On Chevy, it's the timing change. I think those might go out at yeah. you at 150,000 miles, but that still might be cheaper than putting injectors, which a lot of these heavy duties yeah. have an injector problem after about 130,000. Now, that's improving, too. I shouldn't say that, because now they're getting better and better are, with are their manufacturing. Are you talking about my old Duramax? Yeah, your old Duramax. Problem. Did it last 130,000 before you put injectors? Yeah, about that's pr <laughs> My Ford did the same thing. In the old days, say 10 years ago, five years ago, yeah. they actually had that problem now I think it's getting better but so I don't know that these I think these little ones could last just as long as the big ones but that's my theory yeah there's one more thing Can um, we get this number here this guy here is nine yeah I think we okay. got him we got him okay um, there's one more thing that I noticed about the heavy-duty trucks which kind of surprised me right um, you know how, how there's a classification of trucks 
Oh, right. that's right, yes. You know, the, the 2A trucks are technically, you can look this up, either Wikipedia has this as well. Uh, the 2A trucks are basically the half tons. And they're rated by gross vehicle weight, right? Okay. And then the 2Bs are the three-quarter tons. 2B or not 2B, yes, exactly. Yeah, three-quarter tons. And they're rated between 8,500 GVW to 10,000. Uh -huh. And then over 10,000 uh, gross vehicle weight, you have your one-ton trucks. Oh, is that a class Those three? Those are class three. Class three. Right. And then class four, class five, class six, class seven. All the way seven. up to class eight semis, All, yeah. over the road trucks. So the new heavy-duty trucks... And Zach, if you can put a picture of a single rear wheel, like a 2,500 truck, um, the gross vehicle weight on these trucks can be up to or um, 11,350 pounds. On a 2,500? Yes. Wow. So you get this bad boy. Yeah, they used to be like 10,000, and that was kind of yeah. where it stopped. That's yeah. pretty so, amazing. So we're seeing in the industry <sighs> that uh, manufacturers are actually creating their own classes. I know. Ford has done that for hitches and everything else. And Ford has an F600 truck, right? Yes, they do. Which is like a, they, they kind of like a tweener go. truck right. where, where it doesn't kind of belong in a class. But it does have four-wheel drive, so that's a big thing. Now look at this grill. I mean, I know people are complaining about the grill. When you get the monochromatic, which which model is that? Is that the LZ, LT or something? But when you put that white across there, I think that looks good. I mean, I, I'm still a Chrome I agree fan, with you. but when, you, when that's gray, I don't like that. I like that one. I think that's what people are complaining about. But yeah. when you have a monochromatic color, I think it stands out. But Can you hit your chicken one oh, more time? Oh, yeah. oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no. Squawk? Okay. Um, t Taker 610 says, Chevy's new face, a keeper or an emergency redesign? You know what? I Would think I think that's the discussion we're going to have through this entire generation. Yes. I know. It's like, um, when is Toyota going to change their truck? Hey, and heavy duty trucks don't get redesigned very often. Another chicken. Oh, oh cool. Gregory Miller? Is that who that is? Gre says, Gregor Miller. He says, the girl is dancing, and oh. he's referring to this girl. I stopped even but, watching but, her. But, she's, <laughs> but she's, good. she's going pretty good. Um... Thank you, Gregor. We always appreciate your support. It's, it's amazing. Here's a good question. Do you know if the 6.6 .6 gas and the 6.6 .6 diesel share the same block? Are they pretty similar? No. No, uh, and they don't. Uh, so uh, that's a really good question. Diesel's uh, high compression, which could be 15 to 20. Gas kind of tops out lower, at 10 to 1. Lower compression. Yeah, and uh, so what, what, sh what GM did with the gas engine is actually it's kind of using their... Uh, uh, small block design, right? So they're the gas engine design. A 6.6 .6 is a small block? According to them, yeah. I mean, it's getting to that yeah, you know, okay. big, big displacement. Yeah. Uh, but but it's kind block. of a, their small block thinking, the small block, they have a lot of experience. And it's direct injection. It's direct injected. No turbo. Yes. The, the Duramax, I mean, if you saw pictures of them side by side, which we have on our yeah. TFO truck channel. Yeah. The size is, you know, the, the diesel engine has such bigger heft. Yeah, it's it's, it's wider. You would. It just yeah, it has would, more accessories on it. Well, it even just, though they are six point six, it makes you think they're, you know, similar, but they're really not. And that's kind of weird to, to said that because now people have to say, "Are you talking about a diesel or a gas?" When yeah. You say six point six. Used to be we knew between the, the six liter and a six seven. I have or another six six. See, it's confusing. I'm that, confused. That brings up another complaint I have. Uh -oh. I had a complaint with GM. You know how the Duramax name for the diesel is very strong, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know but, where this is but, going. But the gas V8 engine doesn't have a name. It needs a name. Vortec is kind of gone now. Six liter is probably one of the last of the Vortecs. Yeah. Well, the, the 4.3 is still around. That used to be a Vortec engine. Yeah, yeah but now they call gas. it Ecotec 3. Oh, they call it something else yeah, now. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah, you're right. They but, need a but why special don't we, name. Guys, let us know. What should GM call their new 6.6 heavy duty engine? The uh, Cyclone, the Dominator, the, um, I don't know, let us know. Hi, boy. No, okay. that's something else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you flat tow the new high, uh, HD? Uh, I don't uh, know if you can tow, got, flat tow any HD. I mean, that's a whole different, that's a good research thing because those are so heavy. I'm not so sure you see one of those behind an RV. But well, I've but if you put it in neutral, transmission. And there, case, there neutral, is no manual, so you can't uh, pop neutral. it in neutral. But, it, but you also got to run the pump in the transmission. If the differential, unless you take the drive shaft off, you probably could. But, so, uh, another chicken uh, donation. Oh, oh, my goodness. You know, I've got um, a couple more things to add on the heavy duty before we go to questions. Okay. If we're running out of time. We have no time, but we, let's keep going. Yeah, we're good. 
Okay. Let's keep going. There are a lot of people interested in this discussion. Now, I know you're getting your truck. What, Monday we're going to do that gauntlet with the new Chevy? Did you want to announce that? Is that some you, top secret thing I shouldn't say? Uh, it's <laughs> it's you put it in the, You put it in the notes yes. right there. So, so we are getting the new diesel yes. 2020 truck. And the question I have, is it a short bit or a long bit? It's a 25. It's a short bed. It's a 610. So we Six will get a chance inch. to do my theory because I think I'm going to be, that Chevy's going to be okay. But I want to try it where, you know, they got that, the ball for the gooseneck is two inches behind the rear axle, which to me is a whole new weird thing. Yes. But maybe it's fine and we'll try that because we're going to put a gooseneck on it. A trailer. Right. And I will see, yeah, a gooseneck trailer. We're not going to put a goose in its neck on there. But <laughs> when you, we'll see when we're going down the road if it tries to float, if the front stays if planted. If the flat front unloads. And I, I don't yeah. think it will. I think they're they're fine, but I, w I really might just bug the heck out of me. I want to try it to see if putting that ball back that far has a, has a, a you know, an effect. And then we'll know. So we'll know next week if, 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 if it's a good decision or if it may need some adjustment. But that's uh, just one thing. And... What I was also going to tell you is, you know, they're using the same size tires. Even now, this truck will, on a dually, will hold 35,500. And we pulled that much on the airport at yeah, 30 we, miles we, an hour. We did. It so was, we a, could, it was we, an anvil. Yeah, we couldn't, yeah. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't go fast oh. enough to try out the exhaust brake or the grade shifting. But another thing that they've done to that is, and the brakes are the same size, so the, and the tires are the same size. So I, I keep thinking, of course, you know, you're talking about GVW. If it stays at 14,000, it, it, it's fine. But they also said that they're going to add 15 PSI to the tires. That means the tire company had to test it and do all that stuff. So you're going to have a little higher pressure. So I, I'm wanting to see how that works out. So I don't mm -hmm. that means that that 2500 you have will have 95 pounds of pressure instead of 80 in the back well, we'll tires. We'll check it. We'll find out. But that's we'll check it. that's we'll all going to be interesting to um, me. So we you got, mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, Just, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Are you done? So okay. are you off of your tire pressure bandwagon? Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of bandwagons. I'm whining one. And you start to learn this too. Yes, we go to these events, you just bitch and bitch the whole time we're there. It's complaint no, after I don't complaint. Bitch. Oh, is this a new one? Yeah, it's new. Dan Atkinson. My uh, semi challenges all HD traders to the Super Ike. Oh cool. Hey. He wants we'll, to tow he wants to tow that anvil. Well, yeah. I'll oh, take I'll, I'll take you with one of these new trucks over that semi because the semis are made for long haul. Yes. But I don't know any of them that fly up the Ike at, but, at but eighty thousand. Yeah. Pounds. Dan put a bigger turbo on his oh, semi. Well, maybe. But then there was an issue with his new turbo, and then I think then you just fixed it, right? So uh, th I still want to do that, you know, um, semi versus heavy. Yeah, duty. and we'll go up it with you know thirty thousand pounds, but the semi has to be at eighty. That well, we're gonna be grossing forty. 40,000, 40 yeah. 40 something. So we'll go up at um, 43,000 gross, but you got to go up at 80,000 pounds. There's a little other um, nugget of information we learned about the anvil. Zach, do you have the picture of the trailer with you the anvil? You don't have a picture of that cute uh, little anvil on that trailer? Um, no, I thought that was a little bit over the top. I just got the, uh, you know, the things you would actually yeah. put on a flatbed trailer. Anyway, so you will see this, um, you will see this very shortly. Um, it's also on our website, tfltrack.com. Uh, they built this giant anvil, which was about 10 feet oh, tall. Yes, yeah, very big, very tall. big. And um, we learned that the anvil itself was built by um, um, somebody, a lo like a local company. Yeah, that Avengers movie. Was the guy that made that great big hammer? Who was that guy? That was Thor. That, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's who made this, wasn't it? Same guy? <laughs> Put it on that planet and hit the buzzer and <laughs> Thor flew in the air. I bet he makes anvils, too. So he, the anvil is made out of wood and fiberglass and other materials. Magic. And the anvil weighs 1,400 pounds. It's magic. But the anvil was sitting on this trailer with steel plate. Yeah, a lot of steel plates. Uh, that actually probably was gross. Several, was inches, several inches of steel plate actually yeah. weighing down the trailer. Yeah. So that's kind of the behind the scenes. Oh, there's a the little caterpillar. There's a caterpillar, Deere. and also there too. was the anvil. And we raced, me and Andre. Who won that race? Uh, you did. He had bigger, you know what? But I had more weight. Uh, Andre, I kicked his butt. This is a good question. How come the 6.6 .6 gas gets a 6-speed automatic, but the 6.2 gets a 10-speed? That's a good question. Get GM on the phone. Let's so ask him. I, I, we were asking this question to them. There is not a really, like, a straightforward well, I, answer. I think it's economics. I think they... It's economics. But, but the thing what it is, and this is not a driving impression, I hope, but the, that, that six-speed automatic has been around for probably 20 years. Yes, and, and GM told me years ago that that engine or that transmission had the least amount of warranty work ever done on one of their truck transmissions. They were really proud of that transmission. So that doesn't hurt you 
uh, having something dependable with a new engine. Now you're going to keep the same transmission, so there's no dependability issues that will scare away the buyers. But two, what we have learned, unless you recalibrate a 10-speed, that 6-speed, which is what Ram still uses the six-speed ISIN in their, even their biggest 35,000-pound truck. But when you have six gears instead of 10, that means between each gear is more RPM. Mm -hmm. And higher RPM actually makes grade shifting work better. Mm -hmm. And when you got 10 real close together, it doesn't. And you know, you know, we had that problem with the Ford on a, on a bunch of things. And they put they recalibrated certain ones, and it worked fantastic. So there is a way of getting around it where you actually tune each gear so uh, differently, but that's that's what I what I know of it. I like the grade shifting on six speed, but yeah, right. I mean, everybody has that question. Why would you not? You go ten speed diesel. Why wouldn't you go ten speed in this big gas? Ford's gone ten speed on a new seven three, and Ram went to eight speed on yeah. the new six four. So it's a good question, and I, I, that's I'm just theorizing. But I, I when I talk well, to them, they talk good... about economics and and yeah. how they so, do things. So first of all, I absolutely agree with you, uh, Mr. Truck. Also, I would add. Well, when I was having dinner with some of the engineers, they said uh, often case, and it's really important for heavy duty trucks. Yeah. You don't want to change absolutely everything. You want to keep something that's been the, the right. constant. Yeah. So for the diesel uh, truck, the new one, it's the engine. Right. The engine, the 6.6 well. liter Duramax is mostly the same. Yes, as before. just a few components. Uh, the transmission on the gas one is mostly the same as before. Right. It's been right. updated a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because if you change everything, you have no idea, like, you know, you might have future problems, you don't know what's right. happening. So you want to keep one variable the same. Yeah. And then yeah. start learning about new variables that you're adding to it. And also cost. Yeah. I think you, wanna, you want that base price to be low and sure. the six speed offer that. Um, the GMC heavy duty trucks, uh, there was a question here. Uh, there's an event in August. Yeah. Um, early August, I believe. Yeah. For the GMC heavy duty trucks, which are coming very soon. Yeah, uh, that's, we're, that's, we're still that's, getting uh, money. Holy cow! Yeah, I saw two or three of them coming through there. So cool. Bud guy can't read the ones above Bud guy. That's awesome. Uh, Fixie Clary, five bucks. Thank you very much. I will put you on the board. Uh, I didn't know you did live streams. Yes, we do. Um, Bud guy is the regular cab uh, bigger like the other cabs? Mm, uh, I don't know. No, no, um, no. You sure? Because wider. they're wider, it's they're wide. longer, it's and the wide. beds are longer. I think it's almost like 6'10 on a short bed. It used to be 6'6. Six, six. Yes. But I think the cab, you don't think the cabs are bigger? They look bigger. I don't think it's any more length. I don't know that they announced that's anything a good, on that's that. A good that question. is a good question. That's, a good question. I, that's an obvious um, question. We should have asked these guys. Because I didn't well, even think about Well, we only had a day and a half. I know. It was very, there was, they could have done this thing for a week, and I could not get all my questions answered. Very good question. I think it's longer, but I can't, I don't. I have proof of that. We will find out. I saw Dan Atkinson said on here that he got his, his semis fixed now. Oh, it's fixed. So he's ready to chase us up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ready. Point me toward danger, Azim. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. That's really great. Um, there are people asking about the 7.3 liter V8 Ford, right? Yeah, we know a lot about that. No, we don't. There is no... <laughs> There is no, there is no specs available for it yet. Hey, I'm going to Ford um, Monday. I'm going to ask them. Pernell Go, Robinson, another five bucks. Oh, oh, uh, cool, guys, guys, thank you so much. Um, uh, wow, uh, Zach, are there other questions that I'm missing uh, as far as the chat room is concerned? No, we're kind of running over on time a little bit. I think. But we got three we, we more did. questions but, but so right here. But there is so many people here in the in the, in the uh, in this show. Why don't you go ahead and answer like the most interesting one on our list? So we had prepared some questions that you guys sent in to ask at tfltruck.com. Thank you for sending your questions once again. Uh, which one is the most interesting Let's see. one? My wife likes to sit on my lap while I drive. Whoa! Oh, that's another one. Which, no, the, no, no. Uh, well, this is this is the first one from John. Is actually, okay. Let's actually, pr one. promoting. And he bought our book. Thank you, John. Oh, John. He bought our book. I'm so happy. You bought Truck Nuts. So thank you very much. It's still available on Amazon and other bookstores. It's the book we wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, but so thank you. So John said recently you published a video comparing a towing performance on the five liter F-150 versus the F-250 diesel towing 9,000 pounds. So thank you. It's on TFL truck. Um, he has a 2001 Chevy Silverado 1500 with a 5.3 V8. Um, and he has a 27 foot travel trailer that weighs 6,000 pounds. He wants to get an F-250. Is it going to be overkill? Yes. 
Okay, next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's 6,000 pounds. I mean, that's, that's even a mid-range for a half ton. You don't need to spend the extra money. It's not dramatically high money on a gas engine on three-quarter ton versus a gas engine on a half ton. Yeah. But, yeah, 6,000 pounds, you really don't need to go that crazy on it because it's going to cost you fuel mileage. Yes. And, and especially when you're comparing gas to gas. No, I, I would say look at, the, look at the half tons. Half tons, for sure. Uh, if you're talking of 6,000 pounds or even seven or 8,000 pounds, your half ton truck will do good. Um, the newer one, I don't know uh, on your 2001, I'm not sure what your limit is there, but the new truck, uh, if you're buying a newer one, it will handle it beautifully. Um, we had another question about, um, should I use weight distribution on my trailer when my trailer weighs about 6,400 pounds on yes, a Ford? Yes, yes, yes. Another yes. Because that's, you know, if you look at your owner's manual, now GM is really specific. They say over 5,000 pounds, you must use weight distributing. Ram and Ford say, we really want you to. It's our suggestion. Please do. But that, I, for, you know, for sway control, half tons do not have the heavy-duty springs that a three-quarter ton does. And that causes some squat issues. But two, if you've got a big RV trailer and you're going down the road, and uh, you, side guests will move you all over. And that was a, a good thing that Chevy did. Chevy did, oh, I forgot to tell you about that. They got that sticker on the heavy duties now. The same oh, sticker yes. in half ton. It tells you how much your trailer weighs. I love that sticker. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, but even those guys on those three quarter ton 2500s with the big box trailers yes. pulling 16 to 14,000 pounds, right, right. they use weight distributing with sway control. And that was great. And that was what they said. If you have wind gusts come up, we want you to have control. So I, I'm all, a half ton, they definitely need it, especially over 5,000 pounds. Yeah. You need it. And I, and I agree too. That's a big deal uh, for having sway control. But to get a good weight distribution hitch right. that has sway control, not just a bunch of chains and, you know, bars. But. So you will have some videos, Chevy videos, still publishing on your channel, Yes, right? I'm a little slower than you are. <laughs> I don't work all night like he does. Um, I, so, yeah, I've got, so, I've got yeah, more camera. Yeah, check coming. out some of the stuff that Ken's done on his channel, Mr. Truck TV. Uh, we're going to have the uh, 2020 heavy-duty truck in Colorado next week. Yes. So we'll be doing Monday, a, uh, Monday, uh, Monday. Sunday. So thank you so much. And... Of course, live shows are Thursdays, although next Thursday, I think we're going to be out. Or at least oh. I'm out. Oh, yeah, you are out. Um, but you know what? I'm out. We tell people that we're going to be in Igon on Monday, we may have a 1,000 people no, driving down the road. They may what? be just packed. We may have people all over the place standing on the side of the road just to see the truck. Why would you say that? I don't know. Why would I okay, say that? Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you for joining <laughs> us, and, um, and we'll see you next time. Oh, they've so, got to work. They can't uh, come mess with us anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to play us out. Play I, us hope, out. I hope this song works. I, I really hope so. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is a new song. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're so sorry? He's listening, man.